welcome to Power Charting. I am your host, Bruce Frazier. And today we are on the path to Wyckoff Trading Mastery with special guest, Franz Herr. Franz, thank you for being here. Bruce, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm really looking forward to our get together today. What we're going to do today is so important that I really want to emphasize that we're going to get into the area of how do you create peak performance in your trading. Trading is a business. To be successful over time, you want to be able to make 100 or a thousand trades and on balance with your methodology is to be able to extract net profits from those efforts. And it requires real uh, commitment and persistency and uh, the path to mastery. And there's no better person to talk about on this subject than Franz. And so today we're gonna to talk about the importance of process and with that, we're going to have Franz, who uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. Franz is a educator at Wyckoff Analytics, and he has been uh, teaching at Wyckoff Analytics for a number of years. He's a very disciplined Wyckoffian, but more importantly to us is that he is a instructor on the processes of rules-based trading. And uh, he does some very important uh, vlogs, and he also writes a blog on trading, rules-based trading, and he does this vlog, which is called an anatomy of a trade. And with that, Franz, uh, tell us, what would you add to the, the work that you do at Wyckoff Analytics? and uh, how you uh, express that. Do you teach classes? Do you do videos? What are some of the things that you do that are of value? Well, at Wyckoff Analytics, and, and thanks for that very nice introduction, Bruce. And it's Like I said, it's very much my pleasure to be here with you today and talking about this interest that is so important to our success as traders. You know, 97% of traders actually probably have a very, very difficult time making money. So we want to be in the 3% that are successful and we want to learn about what are the steps we need to take to get to that point. So what I do at Wyckoff Analytics specifically is I head up what's called the process group. And it's something that we'll talk about how you get to the process group in a little bit. But my whole role there as leader is working with other members of the group. And I'm basically, I'm just a member. I mean, I'm moving up the learning curve constantly myself. But all of us together are working on taking the steps that we need to take within a very analyzed process methodology, which we'll get into the different pieces of it, the parts of the puzzle, uh, as we you know, conclude this or, or move along with this conversation. And we take this and we develop this and then we make it part of our very psyche. We make it part of ourselves in our approach to the market because trading is not easy. And that's a testimony to the fact that so few of us actually do very well and the few that do basically uh, they're following a process. So that's basically what I do uh, in a nutshell, Bruce. Back to you. Tell me, uh, Franz, what, what is the requirement for being a successful trader? Do you have to be a genius? Do you have to be like a rocket scientist or, uh, you know, uh, come out of uh, Harvard University? What do you, what are the, what's the essential element of a successful trader? Uh, well, there's a difference between a successful trader and a trader, because what does it actually take? What is required? I'll go to Mark Douglas, who was just a phenomenal teacher of trading psychology. What does it actually take to put a trade on to, to, or even to have a successful trade? Basically being able to click a mouse, right? 
to enter your trade, just click that mouse and it could be a huge winner. But what does it take to be consistently successful is a whole other ball of wax. And it's that consistency that requires a process and an understanding of a whole way of thinking about trading, uh, especially for those of us who are somewhat uh, or completely technical traders uh, of thinking about how uh, we interact with the markets. Back now, what we're going to do is, first of all, you'll see down here the YouTube channel, where which is Wyckoff Analytics, where you can see Franz's V-Logs, his anatomy of a trade. It's part of the Wyckoff Analytics library. Go look at those. There's only 186 of them. So it'd be good if you watched all of those in the next week or so for homework. Wouldn't you say, <laughs> Franz? Is just, and we'll talk in a minute about why it's really important to evaluate and review your trades and talk about anatomy of a trade in that context. And we will do that in a minute. But uh, we're going to move on here. And we're going to just stop real briefly and turn the screen over to Franz. And then he will uh, show us some of the aspects of successful rules-based trading. So we will be right back. Thank you. We're back. And, uh, you know, the key to being in the successful business of trading, Franz, is that uh, over a long period of time, you can successfully extract profits from the market. Now, uh, does that happen for people that just show up and just trade every day? They show up and they, you know, they just start trading and this uh, results in their success day in and day out, or are there certain elements that have to be present in a person's trading process, thinking of it as a business and uh, for them to be able to consider themselves to be professional and getting professional results from the efforts that they put out? Kind of a broad question, but, uh, you know, it, what's involved? Yeah, well, what did, again, I go back to Mark Douglas and his question, what does it take to have a successful trade? Basically being able to click a mouse. But what does it take to consistently be a successful trader? Well, there's a lot of backstory to that. So looking at this slide, uh, this is something that Roman Bogomazov over at Wyckoff Analytics has put together and talking about the overall and complete path that a trader is following if he really wants, he or she really wants to become successful. And there are four parts to this. So the first part is knowledge. And the knowledge part of it, uh, it's depending on the type of trading you do. If you're a technical trader and you want to learn uh, what MACD is and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're a Wyckoff methodology trader, uh, there's just a huge body of knowledge. But it's all, you know, starting from ground zero and moving up in terms of being able to analyze what's going on using certain, you know, basic fundamentals of approaching the market. And for technical traders, which I think most of us probably are, uh, you know, there are all sorts of things that we need to learn. So this first area is getting, just getting that, building that knowledge bank. And, it, you know, it can involve market beliefs, the price cycle, the structure, price volume selection and tactics. And all of that is actually taught in two different courses that are uh, held by Wyckoff Analytics. Uh, and the first one where most of this knowledge is imparted is the Wyckoff uh, Trading Course Part 1. So once that's that body of knowledge, just the and the ability to analyze and and look at a chart and know what sort of what you're looking at and, and understand what the what the different indicators mean and how to you know how they interact with price and volume and so on and so forth. The next part of the puzzle is taking that knowledge and turning it into actual trading interaction. So this is skill, and this involves the ability to recognize pattern. 
uh, sequential bias analysis, which is specific to the Wyckoff methodology, and then just your execution. Uh, you know, when do you put the trade on? When do you take it off? When do you add? When do you trim? Uh, where do you set your stops? All of the, 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 you know, the fundamental aspects of actually putting on a trade. And all of this is actually taught in the Wyckoff Trading Course Part 2 at Wyckoff Analytics. And then the last part of skill is practice. Practice is simulation is how the term we use for it, but it's basically using the environment that's provided in a great way, like stockcharts.com, to go in and simulate a trading day uh, or a trading week or whatever by going bar by bar and looking how price and volume and uh, structure unfolds and you know basically making simulated decisions that don't really cost you anything other than the learn the experience that you're gaining of where you would trade given the what you're looking at and once you become at the, at the skill level able to interact with the market in a way where you can extract some money from it and this is not something it comes easily on a consistent basis. We all know. The next thing that we I want, move you know, to, just to just to interject here, this software and a little bit of, of a uh, tipping of the cap to uh, StockCharts.com. But there's one of the amazing things when I first started out. Now it's like you know I'm an old old dog, but I would have somebody uh, take a chart, print you know print a chart and put a sheet of paper over the top of it so that I couldn't see the chart. And literally, I, I would pull the chart, the <laughs> paper away, one bar at a time. And I would do this endlessly, hour after hour. I love doing this. And I would literally mark on the chart with a pencil or a pen where what I was doing, buying, selling, shorting, whatever it might be. And then, you know, I would have... Uh, simulated trades and I would do that with, with just a blank sheet of paper over a chart and slide it across one once bar at a time but now this new software is so amazing because you can do this uh, literally on the computer and go through and just have it go through histories one bar at a time and so simulation I did I did endless amounts of that practice 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 and um, so I, I just can't stress it enough. And um, and I know that you really, really um, suggest doing as much of that as possible. Well, there you go. I mean, you're talking to somebody that's that's managed money, that's, you know, got a track record, has been in the business for a long time. And he's telling you that what he what he did to get to that level was practice, practice, practice. And, you know, it, technology is so wonderful today because I sort of got started about the same time. Um, I wish I I wish I'd been more diligent in my simulation work way back when. But, uh, you know, today, you know, I, I get I get the mental picture. I see Bruce. You know, sitting at the at the table with the chart in front of him, going one by bar by just moving that sheet of paper. Today, this you know this software stock charts is just really really crazy good. But yeah, anyway, right. yeah. So people, you know, definitely take advantage of that great technology that's available today, and do as much of this simulation work as possible. But you have to have the knowledge base. You have to have the methodology. And tell us a little bit about process. Well, then once you've got those in place, the next thing is looking at what are the components of a successful trade? What are the pieces of the puzzle? And the first part of it is a trading plan. And we'll take a look at a slide on that in a second. But uh, basically having a plan with an edge. and that comes from looking at the plan through the lens of backtesting. And backtesting can be done a number of different ways. But for us, we like to do it, especially with a white cock, because there is 
you know, to some extent, it's, it can be discretionary. You have to know what you're looking at. So we like to do it visually. We don't like to have a machine go through and, and make the decisions for us because uh, the back testing is also part of simulation. So it's practice and at the same time, looking at our trading plan through uh, the lens of historical, you know, different market environments and so on and so forth. Uh, so once we've gone through the back testing of our trading plan and determined yet that indeed we do have an edge and there's there's a, a methodology that we do that. There's a, a way that we look at a certain number of trades to get that to get that uh, feedback on whether we have an edge or not. Then the next thing we're going to do is decide, well, what what are we actually going to trade? And we have to develop a watch list to come up with you know, our trading ideas. Once we execute one of the ideas on our watch list, then we have a, a position list so that we're, we have a routine of keeping track of our open positions. We're not just, you know, kind of trusting our, our broker to keep track of it for us and, and uh, you know, basically give us very, very little feedback on where we've got our stop set and so on and so forth. So the position list is our feedback mechanism while we're in the market. And then once we close a trade by our rules, hopefully, we're going to do post-trade analysis, which is a vital part of the process. And what that is, and we'll look at an example of that in a little bit too. Uh, what that is, Bruce, uh, as you know, is we go back and we look at the trade, we look at where we made the decisions, we just take a chart out, we, we marked it up and made our notations on it and look and see how did we perform in the actual trade versus our plan? Did we follow our plan or not? And we keep track of that. And we do that every time we close a trade because it gives us just Im immeasurably valuable feedback to improve and if we're, if we're going to improve, we've got to be open to what we're doing. We've got to be aware and we've got to post-trade analyze every trade. So there are other aspects. Uh, the simulation is part of it. The practice, having a, having a weekly and daily routine that we follow, uh, journaling about the, our, anything really, our market uh, approach or you know, senses of what's going on in the market. Uh, how we're doing, how we're feeling mentally, uh, you know, journaling is very, very important. And then uh, basically having a feedback loop that keeps, it's a, it's a self-reinforcing mechanism that we use to stay uh, and keep our goal of becoming a consistent trader in mind and making whatever steps, taking whatever steps and making the effort that it takes to continue to improve. So One of the that's things, basically the process. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to add on to that. One of the things I noticed, and I've worked with many, many traders over the years, is that really great traders love the process. So they, they uh, install the knowledge base and the skill sets to a level that is just uh, super high proficiency, high competency. But then what they do is they have a very specific process and they have to go through all these elements that you just described. And this really is part of mindset, I think, because these traders uh, almost love the process of uh, all of the uh, elements and areas that you just talked about so much because uh, they love to go through the charts or go through the the elements in their um, um, aspect of market timing or uh, stock selection, et cetera. But then they also uh, are getting those onto some kind of a, um, a list and then managing that list and having a list process, the, a watch list process that's very effective for finding them the best ideas. All of this, all of these elements, they just get to a level of high efficiency and they just uh, are constantly doing this. And what it does when they do this is it puts them uh, closer to the efficient frontier of their methodology. This is a term that I used to use. I used to teach this class on what um, Franz is talking about here, 
at uh, in graduate school. I had a 15 week class on peak performance trading. And we would talk about the efficient frontier. And there's an efficient frontier that your trading process uh, can reach hypothetically. But all traders, no matter who it is, no matter how good you are, is somewhere below the efficient frontier of the methodology. And mastery is getting closer and closer to the promise of the methodology. And that methodology has to have edge. That means that if it's operated at a high level, at a mastery level, that it creates and extracts profits from the efforts of the trader, of the operator of the system. And that takes us to mindset, Franz. Tell us a little bit about mindset. Yeah, I mean, and and I love the, the idea of the efficient frontier. Uh, you could also call it the profit gap, the difference between what the profitability could be if everything was executed perfectly versus what it actually is and how the trader executes it. In that and, particular and you're moment. going to show that in a minute, actually, aren't you? The uh, uh, we are. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we'll let's we'll let's move on. Go ahead and talk about mindset, and I really okay. want to show people how you do that because it's quite good. Okay, so I mean, and the mindset. There are all sorts of. I mean, there there are a lot of them, but there are lots of of mistakes that are very common to all traders. So, and one of them, I was just thinking about Bruce while you were talking. One of them is just simply, instead of thinking about what is the market the market that I'm getting from my trading when I'm, when I'm actually interacting, instead thinking about what is, the, what is the effect on my money? What's happening here? And that completely just loses your perspective if you're thinking about what am I making on this trade I mean, instead of What's the market telling me? What is, is the market telling me that I better start taking profits at this point or not? Or what, you know, what are the, the, the interaction of price and volume? What is that message? Not what is the, the impact of my bottom line? Because if you follow the process, the impact will automatically accrue to your bottom line. So this mindset thing, it's thinking about trading in a completely different way. And we can, we could talk about this in, in multiple sessions, Bruce. I mean, it's so, it's so oh, important. I can't wait because the reason that so many people, such a high percentage of people are unable to create or extract results, profits from the market is because uh, they think in a way, and this is society that really works on us in this regard, is that society works in such a way that we are raised to think um, and act in a way that is not conducive to success in financial market trading. And that we must learn to think differently. And the, this ability to think differently from a peak performance perspective is really hard to install. It's difficult to install, and this is called behavioral change. And being able to change our belief systems and our behaviors to uh, an approach or a practice that will uh, put us in the right mental state for success is very, very difficult and very few traders achieve it. So I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Franz. Okay, well, Bruce, I think we could, like you said, we could spend multiple sessions talking about this, uh, the mindset required to be successful in trading and why don't we just move along here and very sure. quickly just take a quick look at what one aspect probably the first aspect of the process is which is a trading plan and what's the trading plan it's a rule-based model of trading behavior based on a trader's observations and beliefs about the market uh, and that's i think a great description of it, uh, the fact that it's rules-based, the fact that it talks about what is the behavior necessary to result, to produce the results that the trader is looking to produce, depending on you know what their time frame is and so on and so forth, and based on their observations and beliefs about the market. So that's uh, just one aspect of the process 
Uh, the other thing that we were talking about is the post-trade analysis. So we'll just take a quick look at this. Uh, it's an example of a simulated trade that was done. And we can look at how the uh, chart was used to mark up. And then also what happens in the post-trade analysis. And that's probably the most important part of it here. So we see the traders moving along. Uh, it doesn't look like this is stockcharts.com. So sorry about that. But uh, the principle is the same with stockcharts.com. You go one bar at a time and notice uh, for white coffee, as you see the spring that occurs here uh, after a trading range is evolved. And then this particular entry was done, it looks like, on some sort of backup to the edge of the creek action that broke out. And you can see how on a simulated basis, you're going to go through a little heat in this area and then where the exit occurs. And all of this is it can be done simulation wide with a simulation. Uh, you're keeping track of that. And then at the conclusion, and this is the most important part, notice this area down here at the bottom of the chart where we're taught, we're looking at several aspects of the trade. So first of all, the analysis was the bias. In other words, was the direction that we expected the market to move correct? Yes, so we give ourselves a check here. What about the timing? Did we enter at the right point according to our rules? And remember, this is according to our rules. So in this case, you can see, yes, the character, the target, was there a target specified? In this case, the trader wants to be able to do that and they didn't, so they don't give themselves a check mark here. Uh, what about the point of entry, the stop loss placement? Uh-oh, none. The big no-no there. Uh, there was no stop loss at all used. Uh, what about add-ons, trims? So we go all the way across. There was an exit uh, based on a slight retrace of a prior upthrust. And you can see that if you take all of these check marks and all of these X's, so the check marks are yes, the X is no, and add them up, you come up with a variance of 50%. So what that's telling this trader is they follow their rules at about a 50% efficiency level, talking back to the efficient frontier that Bruce was mentioning earlier. Uh, and, you know, that's it. That's, that's very good information. But what's even more in good information to have is over here in this next area, which is the comments. So we can see that there are mistakes, best practices, and a feedback loop that are being in incorporated here. So the mistakes were exiting too soon, triggered on uh, only one swing high down, whatever, whatever the mistakes are, they're being documented here. And then the same thing with the best practices, because we wanna be honest with ourselves if we can't admit that we're making mistakes, there's no, you know, there's nothing wrong with making a mistake. First of all, you have to understand that, you know, that's just part of life. And if you can't, if your ego gets in the way of that, you know, that reality, then there's going to be big trouble until you can kind of close that gap between, you know, what you have to be able to recognize versus what your ego is allowing you to recognize. But um, seeing these mistakes occur and then as you do multiple analyses like this you'll start seeing some some mistakes might become somewhat repetitive if you're making the same mistake on a consistent basis wow what a great opportunity to put a trading rule in plan to stop doing whatever that is that you're doing on a consistent basis and right there you're starting to close that efficient frontier. It, you're moving Same towards thing. mastery. You're moving so, towards mastery. Right. So say, and then the other thing that people learn when they do this over and over again and do the post-trade analysis is that, well, you know, I keep doing the same thing over and over again. It may not be in one aspect of the post of the, tr tr you know, the post-trade studies, but you see your tendencies. And when you see your tendencies, you go, you know, I need a rule for that. You know, I need to be conscious, consciously aware that I do that and it doesn't serve me well. You know, maybe it's a thought process or it's a behavior or whatever it might be. And 
then you're able to incorporate new best practices into what you're doing only because you're seeing it in repetition. It's like in the last 30 trades, I did this 18 times. And then you're able to see that this is something that you can improve on. And through improving on it, it's going to move you more towards the efficient frontier of your methodology. And look at right down here where it says feedback loop. Look what this trader is saying about this particular trade. Always enter an initial stop loss. New rule. There you go. So taking that feedback and incorporating it into your trading to increase your efficiency. Going yeah, it's a, and such a great lesson for that trader to go through to recognize. Everybody knows uh, theoretically that they should set stop losses. But when you see it in action, it you know you start to install it at an, an emotional level. And uh, when you're able to own that as a belief that you need to set those stop losses, that's when you're at a place where you're going to start to really have improvement because you go, you know, I would never have a trade on without a stop loss, you know, as yes, an example. Just exactly. As an example. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that everybody even knows that. I think some no, people I think most get people into do. a trade. I think people... I know you use a stop loss because you think you're right. You think you know what the market's going to do. Do you really know what the market's going to do? If you're a technical trader, we're playing a probabilities game. And we know over a long, you know, over a, a sequence of trades that our edge is going to give us some sort of expectancy on what our outcome is going to be. But we don't know what's going to happen on any given trade. We have no clue. One trader somewhere in the world can completely upset the apple cart. So, and, you know, just blow up the pattern that we're looking at. So we don't know what's going to happen with an individual trade. Why would you not predefine your risk in that kind of an environment? I mean, it's crazy not to. So, anyway, enough. What well, can you imagine on on that? <laughs> operating in a system where you can be successful with only 30% of your trades working? That means that 70% of your trades in a system like that, with a person that has a method that creates a profit, 70% of the trades are in one form or another getting stopped out. They're being abandoned through a process of risk management, which means that there's, for that trader, there's no right or wrong. It's just, they're looking for certain characteristics in the market that will give them profitability that exceeds the losses that they're creating on the 70% that don't work. And so, you know, you can imagine how the dynamics of having a methodology is so important to that trader and uh, being able to execute on that, on that, because in a hundred trades, 70 of them are not going to work. Now I'm not saying that all systems are like that, but I'm saying that this is a mindset that goes with being able to trade that process. So exactly. Franz, last thoughts. Last thoughts are, well, Bruce, it's been great uh, talking with you. Uh, I, I've been probably doing more talk. I wish I had more of a chance to hear, hear your thoughts on this because you've been around so long, uh, a professor at the graduate level of this, a uh, trader yourself, uh, working in a trading company, uh, just tremendous background. So um, I really appreciate your inviting me onto the show with you. And uh, looking forward to hopefully doing this again in the future. And I would also uh, suggest anybody that's interested in going down this path and following it, it's not easy. So don't expect, you know, don't expect it to, to happen without a lot of effort. But if you are interested in following this path, then go to the White Cough Analytics website and check out the courses that are offered and start learning about the Wyckoff methodology as taught by a tremendous, tremendous teacher, my sensei. That's all and I have to say, Bruce. Fantastic, Franz. And uh, also go to YouTube page. Wyckoff Analytics has a YouTube page, Anatomy of a Trade. Franz has 186 
of these where they go through a post analysis. You can learn about the post analysis process by watching those uh, uh, videos and uh, in incredibly valuable. And I'll say this one last thing, and that is that uh, we're gonna have Franz on more often regularly because we, you know, I think Franz thinks that, you know, your being on this mastery path is so important and it's important in our community. And we want to just keep working on this. If you have questions for Franz or topics that you'd like to have covered in this uh, uh, theme, email me and and suggest to me uh, uh, what you'd like Franz to cover, and we will go over uh, the the, uh, the the best ideas for that and uh, keep doing this and let us know what you think. So this is a little different direction and it's it's harder work. You know, it's not as sexy as just going out there and evaluating charts or markets or whatever. I mean, this is like where you're down in the trenches, you know, really working on the hard stuff that is not easy to do to be successful. And we want to really emphasize that we want to learn to love the process. And with that, Franz, thank you so much for being here. And we'll do it again. Bruce, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.